What's up everybody, John from Old Learning Farm here. Thanks for joining me. In today's video, I'm gonna give you the one year review on our Woodland Mills HM122 sawmill. There's gonna be three parts to this. The good, the bad, and overall thoughts and feelings. That's right, I'm gonna talk about my feelings in this video. I hope you're ready. I might shed a tear. I might do a little bit of crying. Let's get into it. All right, so. I have bought, or so it hasn't been quite a year since I've had this thing, but it's been about nine, 10 months. So I figured just about time for it anyway. So I have somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 or 45 hours on this thing. The hour meter broke. I'm actually not sure when that happened or if I did it or if something else happened. But so that's, I guess you could count that as a bad thing. Although it doesn't really matter. So between 30 and 40 hours. So I've put some good time on it. I've cut lots and lots of wood. I've built two outbuildings using wood that I've milled. I've also sold a ton of slabs. I haven't quite paid for the mill with slabs, but I think overall in terms of building and slabs, somewhere in the neighborhood. So the bad, I don't think there really is too much bad. There are a couple things that happened recently that I can go over. So I'll show you two things besides the hour meter that have happened actually recently. So the complaint that you'll hear online a lot is that this is made of cheap Chinese metal. And I think that may be the case. So you can see here, there's a crack right in the corner of where one of the log stops go. So this is what prevents the logs from sliding off the side because obviously the band saw goes that way. So it pushes the logs against that. So that's what holds the logs in place and also gives you something when you're turning the log over to uh, roll against. So anyway, I was I had a nice white oak log on here, rolled it, heard a crack, and there it is. So the other thing is a problem with this winch, which is really just a standard 1200 pound winch. And that's what operates uh, the height of the saw head here. So this head slides along these poles and also sorry it's so dirty i've been milling all day so as you crank it up so what i found is on this winch there are a couple places where this set screw doesn't match up with its hole right there now what you're supposed to use this for or what this is supposed to do is that set screw is supposed to lock into that hole so that the vibration of the machine doesn't accidentally jumble the head down a little bit. So it's not like a tremendously huge deal, but like, you know, I can't really get it in there. If I try really hard and I push it, you know, I push this handle forward, I can get it to go in there, but it's not worth it most of the time. So the good thing about those two problems is that last week I talked to customer service spent maybe 20 minutes overall on the phone talking to the tech and talking to the customer service representative. And they were able to send me out a brand new winch because we, we found it's like some kind of bearing that in there that's bad. And they sent me out a new log bunk to replace the one that had the log stop that was cracked. They said that usually that's not covered under warranty, but they said because I'm such a handsome and nice guy, they were gonna replace it for me for free. So that's great. I actually, the winch already came in. I just haven't gotten to replacing it yet because today I just really wanted to get milling. Um, but the log bunk is on its way, and so I'm very excited about that. All right, so the only other quote-unquote bad thing I will say is how difficult this is to assemble. So it obviously comes in lots of different pieces, and now what I have here, and sorry, again, sorry for the mess. I had, the tarp is basically frozen to the metal, but so I have the standard HM122 and one extension. So I can cut logs up to 16 feet long. And this is basically a overall like 20 feet long from end to end. Now you can see that there's little sections in here. And so obviously to be as sturdy as possible, it would be best to not have any breaks in the metal. So if this were like a super, you know, expensive mill, you would probably have this L channel go all the way from end to end. 
and I don't know if it's called L channel. I just know this, this metal you would have be one solid piece, but instead it's three pieces. And that just makes it a little bit difficult to put together. It makes it a little bit, uh, we'll call it finicky. Because what you have to do when you set it up, and I can tell you this from experience because I have set it up and broken it down two times. Once when I first got it, and then once when we moved it. Because this is technically a portable sawmill, but I didn't get the version with the trailer. Because they don't make a on-road version of the trailer for the HM122 because it's so small. So I was just like, you know, what's the point? You know, looking back on it, maybe that would have made sense, but not that big of a deal. So basically what we did was I set it up initially right where we were going to be building our alpaca pasture because what we did was we bought it and they told us it was going to be four to 12 weeks for delivery. So I didn't even think it was going to come in time. Two weeks later, we got the notification that it was on the way. So we had to spring into action and set up a temporary location for it at first. And uh, then we had to move it again. And it was just a pain in the butt to put together. There's a lot of bolts. There's a lot of bolts that really look the same. And while the user manual was, you know, readable, I think it could have been a little bit better, but it's tough with uh, an installation as complex as this. So, but that's really all the bad. You know, everything else, this machine has worked great. It's got, uh, so I have the nine and a half horsepower Kohler motor. I've had no problems with it. It's been great so far. Um, so the good things are, this was the cheapest sawmill that I could find that was available. I think, I think the only one cheaper was the Harbor Freight model. And I have no problem with Harbor Freight, love Harbor Freight. But if we were gonna spend like the same amount of money, I'm not spending it at Harbor Freight. So the cost was good and the size was good. Now, any, I'll, I'll get more into this in the final section, but so this can mill logs up to 22 inches in diameter, hence the 22 in 122. What, but then the other thing about it is you can only have a max cant size, which is the final like beam you get after milling a log. The max size for that is 17 inches so really you know the max width between these two blade guides you have a blade guide right here and you have a blade guide right here the max width of that is 17 inches so as long as your logs that you're going to be milling are less than that you should be fine so again it's small but it gets the job done um, like I said, I've had no real problems with it and any problems that I've had have been resolved with customer service in a snap, not in a snap, but <laughs> very quickly. And the customer service team is very nice. They also have a Facebook group that they run and that their company, uh, are the admins for. So it's very nice. And there's, it's actually a pretty nice community. Uh, and there's a lot of really knowledgeable people. So if you have a problem, you go in there. You'll probably get like six different answers from a million different people, but you're bound to get your problem solved in there. Uh, Woodland Mills is also very active in that community, so it's great. And it's, it's hard to find a company who does stuff like that. You know, uh, usually it's difficult to get people on customer service and then, you know, who has a Facebook group that they also add. All right, so the last part of this is just gonna basically be my thoughts on being a Sawyer. Because so I had never milled a log once in my life before I bought this. I watched tons and tons of videos, specifically sawing with Sandy. Uh, he makes it look really ridiculously easy, which it is not, <laughs> but it is addicting. And, you know, so I think overall we were in this for less than $5,000, including shipping. And, you know, we're in the process of also refencing our entire alpaca pasture. And I cut, let's see, I have 24, four by four posts made out of white oak that are 10 foot plus long and like doing all the railings and all that stuff it was going to cost us five thousand dollars just in lumber to get that done anyway so for us that can that's considered a win we also saved several hundred if not a thousand dollars on the two buildings that we built that was the key for me so if you are looking into getting your own sawmill here are some of my thoughts that i've had the two things that you really want to think about uh besides the max log size are the max cant size and the throat. So the max cant size we talked about. So there's 17 inches between these guides, but there's also six inches between the top of this blade 
and the throat right here. So the max depth of cut that I can have is six inches. So if you're trying to make, you know, really big buildings and you need eight by eight beams, it's gonna be difficult, but not impossible, to get that done on this machine because it just, it doesn't have the throat capacity. If you had an eight inch, so I think if you get a bigger sawmill, then you would be able to do stuff like that. But for our purposes, it works perfectly. It does everything that I've asked it to do. Um, we have gotten some logs, obviously, that are too big for me to use over here, but that's just the nature of the game. The other thing about it is, so we have, this is my beautiful Kubota L47 tractor right behind me. Most of the logs that are too big for my sawmill are also too big for my tractor. So I don't really feel like trying to hand load you know, a 1500 pound log onto here, it'll take two, anyway. So that's just something to think about. You wanna think about what you're gonna use it for, what type of wood you're gonna mill. You know, I think down the road, if I was really thinking about it and like 10 years from now, could I see myself doing some sort of maybe commercial type milling? Maybe, but if I get to that point, I would think I would need some bigger equipment anyway. So, you know, this does everything, like I said, this does everything I've asked it to do and more. It's been a great machine, it's reliable, it's never broken down. I have even uh, knocked this off of the tracks. As you can see, this dent in my uh, lubrication tank right there came right back and it worked just fine. So those are the two things that I would really think about. Uh, the only other thing that I would think about is how you're gonna load the logs. Because they make like ramps that you can get for this so that you can sort of roll it on there. When we were first looking at getting a sawmill when we first purchased this property, that was one of Catherine's main concerns. She was like, how the hell are you gonna get logs on there? And now having the tractor, that makes things so easy. It's so much faster. You can see I got piles and piles of logs all over here. I can just go in with the pallet forks, pick one up, bring it right over, drop it down, and I'm good. So, I love this sawmill. It's been really great. Wouldn't change a thing. There's been a couple of hiccups here and there and it was a pain in the butt to put together. But overall, love this machine, and I 10 out of 10 would recommend, and I would buy it again. I even have a Woodland Mill stump grinder. Hell, maybe I'll do a review on that next. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Please leave a comment, let me know what you think, and please subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.